crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with another Doodlebug 6x6 paper pad tutorial. This one's going to be a little bit different. I started this video years ago. I bought this paper pad years ago. It's old. I think it may still be available in a few places, but it was like a baby boy themed paper pad from a couple of years ago and I originally bought it because a lot of the organizations that I donate my cards to say they don't get as many cards that are well suited for boys so I bought this paper pad and I started it and then it just became one of those unfinished projects sitting in a zipper bag somewhere in my craft room recently I switched up my space and I've been trying to kind of clean things out in by using them rather than yeah because I have purged and I do do that pretty often I don't want things in my craft room that I'm not going to use so I will donate them to a local arts and crafts reuse center and I'm very lucky to have one like that um, who can take the resources and make good use of them but also that I can sometimes buy supplies from others anyway um I wanted to finish up this paper pad, but I didn't have all the footage. I did have all the cards though. So you can go to my blog and get, you know, look at the pictures and get the measurements for all of the cards. I just won't be able to create them all here on camera, which I figure is fine because I don't really detail go through every card I make anyway. As I, you know, I don't explain, oh, I cut this size and cut that size. That information is more on my blog. So the cut apart sheet had all of these little tiny squares and recently it seems like doodlebug has gone back to having these little squares in their six by six paper pads so even though this is an older one this might give you some ideas if you've gotten a, one of the newer paper pads as a card maker and you're not sure what to do with all those squares i cut the whole sheet which was six squares by six squares because each square is one inch and i tried to cut them in such a way that they like had a cute little gathering that I could use. Now on the new ones, they seem to be spelling words across the paper. So that's a little bit tricky, but if you don't want the letter, or in this case, there was one little saying in the center that said baby on board. I didn't want that. It's not, I'm not making baby cards, even though you definitely could with this, this paper pad, if that's what you need. It's just not what I need. I wanted to cover that center. So I just took a little scrap that I had from a different card that I had made and I cut it to a one inch square and I just covered that single square. And while it's a little bit noticeable because it's an extra layer of paper, since there's just a bunch of random patterns around it anyway, and then I actually added a sticker too because there are a lot of images in this particular paper pad in the little boxes. And so to me, that kind of helped it to blend in a bit. With this paper pad, I did bring in a fair amount of cardstock. That was in part because when I was looking at it, I felt like the green and blue cardstock that I had on hand would go well. And so I decided, and you know, add some interest. Because I bought this card thinking that I would make these cards for boys, I'm keeping it maybe a little more simple. I don't really, I mean, I think boys and girls both like, you know, pretty, well, I don't know. I think they both like interesting cards, but I do recognize that sometimes people are looking for simpler ideas for cards for males or boys, whatever. So that's my thought process there. And by adding layers, it makes it look more interesting and more like, you know, care was put into it without adding necessarily as like, uh, you know, maybe not adding gems or flowers or something if you if you don't want to. So anyway, I also picked a stamp set, a single saying from a stamp set. It's from a Lawn Fawn mermaid stamp set and it says waving hello. And because it's had a nautical theme, I thought it worked out really well. And then I took one banner stamp that I owned and I cut it a bunch of times and I'm using the negative part to hold my banner in place as I'm stamping. Now here, I'm not doing that, but it's, I kind of showed you that before. Like you had, I had all those like, like that sort of scrap paper with all the banners cut out. That's what was happening there. And so that allowed me to just use that over and over again. So I'm probably not gonna keep showing it on camera, but that's one way that I continuously use the same sentiment. And you could pick a simple hello. I just went with this one because it was just a little bit more like punny and on theme for the card. 
I also, because this was in a zipper bag, it had card bases already cut with this green and blue cardstock, which is not something I usually do. And it had some like squares and other shapes already cut out. It also had these washi tapes in it. And these are like literally solid washi tapes, but, and they're really thin. And I remember picking them up a long time ago, thinking I was going to use them with some Bible journaling. It just never really happened. And I wanted to use them a little bit before I pass them on to someone else because I do think they're cool. I just can't imagine using the entire roll. So here I'm adding a little bit of interest by basically putting stripes across this element, but I'm gonna do it on a bunch of different elements. So I might not always show it, but because my mat here has grid lines, it allows me to line them up pretty easily. And of course it's washi tape, so it's already sticky. And I'm just gonna pull the washi tape a little bit longer than what I'm taping it to and uh, just tuck it over the edges. And because it's washi tape, it's so thin that it doesn't add any bulk. Whereas if I had used even solid ribbon in place of the washi tape, it would have added bulk. So if you have some simple patterns of washi or some solid washi and you, you know, you don't want to use up the whole roll, but uh, you know, you want to kind of get some use out of it. I really recommend trying that out. It adds just a little bit of interest to the cards and I, I don't know, I'm just thinking like I have so many rolls of washi tape that I like, I love to use to seal an envelope, but I don't have as many ideas for what to do with them on a card. So that's why I'm kind of trying to share this today. It, you know, it's not going to work for anything that's like super, super detailed, but, um, or I mean, actually it could, but then you might want to go with like a white because I will say the thing about washi tape is it's kind of see-through. So the color comes through a little bit. And in this case, I think it worked out because they were solid. But if it was patterned, the pattern might look a little funny with that like dark blue coming through or something. So it might be better to use a white cardstock to try to recreate that. So here I'm doing the thing that I always do with paper pads that you guys like probably know at this point I'm going to do. I take those like two inch leftover strips that I often have and combine them to create an additional card base by taking a different two inch strip, a different scrap and covering the seam between the two. So, you know, I, I know that my paper pad tutorials aren't always going to have very original ideas. That's just kind of going to be the nature of continuously trying to use a similar uh, product over and over again, is you're going to revisit and use some themes again. So as I mentioned before, some of the cut aparts, because it was a birthday boy themed pack, they don't always make sense. Like I think this one says it's all boy. Um, I I wouldn't be using that for a card. And there's or there's one over there in the corner that says Shh, no wake zone because it's supposed to be like for scrapbooking about uh, a baby. And I I don't have a purpose for that. So I'm gonna flip them over. And the longer ones, the bigger cut aparts have this anchor paper on the back, and so that allows me to. Um, use that as just like an interesting little bit of paper. And so I'm just gonna find little ways to kind of tuck that in. Here, I wanted to add the stripes again. The blue on blue works out great because even though, as I mentioned, washi's kind of see-through, it doesn't really matter in this case. And so that's another thing, you could like match it to the primary color of your washi. And I actually laid out both papers in on my grid mat lined up and then was able to pull the washi strip across to save just a little bit of time. Definitely not a big deal, but a little time saving tip if you need it. If you're going to be doing like I'm doing it, I, I make two of most of the cards that I make. And I decided to go like very uh, thematic with this one and put these whale cut aparts on this whale patterned paper and keep it pretty simple. Another thing that I, I chose to very intentionally not use any references to boys because I by no means think that this paper is only suitable or these cards that I'm making from this paper are only suitable for boys. I want my cards to, in general, be as uh, diverse as possible, like, you know, suit as many audiences as possible. Here, I wanted to use the strip of the other, so the other side of this paper is like a blue tone on tone, really simple pattern. I wanted to be able to use it, but I wanted it to go all the way across the paper. However, the piece that I had left over wasn't big enough. And in order to compensate for that, I'm just going to chop it down the center and cover that seam 
with the pattern paper. This particular pattern paper was really cool. And I actually had one sheet of it left. I'm not sure what I did with the other one, but I, I mean, I used it. It's in the cards. I just don't all the time ahead know which one it was. I wanted to keep it so, so simple. So what I did was I just cut it with a distressed edge die that made it look like the, like, you know, uh, distressed edges of an old map, even though it's a very brightly colored map. So it's not that old looking. Um, and just added the sentiment and kept it simple. I bought the sticker pack to go with this because I knew there were so many things in the paper pad that were maybe not going to be super useful. Like I was, you know, thinking, oh, I'm going to have these cut aparts I can't use and or want to cover up or, you know, alter. So I wanted to have some stickers as an option. With that in mind, I kind of saved them towards the end and made as many cards as I could with or for the most part, you know, made all the cards with the cut parts. I haven't used them all yet, but I wanted to try to use a lot of them so that these were as available, the stickers were as available as possible to finish up things. I, when I do these cards, they are going to be like two of the same design, but because they I don't have two of each sticker. I only bought one sticker sheet and I would recommend that because I usually find one sticker sheet to be enough. I am going to make a very similar design just using different stickers. So here I'm using the seagull versus the dolphin, for instance. That anchor paper is another like cut apart element, those little squares actually, that I wasn't sure how I was going to use. So I'm just flipping it over. Great thing about Doodlebug, it's why I gravitate towards their paper pads so often. I want to have that option of if this particular pattern paper doesn't seem like it's going to work for me, I'll always have the chance to flip it over. I do sometimes work with pattern papers that are single sided, but then I tend to be much more selective and be sure that I like each one because if I don't, I've kind of boxed myself in in terms of completing a six by six paper pad tutorial obviously or well maybe not so obvious but I do have paper pads in my collection that I don't use in a whole tutorial again cut aparts that I want to use but the back there's like that boys only in the snow wake zone which I mentioned before I want to be able to use them and what's nice is if you combine the cut apart, you can create like a sort of like color blocking thing. And so I'm making these smaller square cards that are four and a quarter by four and a quarter and being able to use up a bunch of cut aparts and not use any additional pattern paper because I was finding with this collection that I had more cut aparts than pattern paper in a sense. Like I couldn't just pair each cut apart with its own pattern paper. Also, I could jazz up those simpler patterns that you know I flipped it over uh, with stickers which is why I saved these kind of things towards the end as I mentioned before and putting the sentiment in the other one I decided to go in and cut a few more of the different I luckily still had the same green and blue like some left of that same color of cardstock and so I had to cut a few more of the mats to go with things but like at this point I'd already used the mats so often I wanted to keep using them and I had all these card bases pre-cut and folded so um, I didn't want to like use a colored card base and then not necessarily the mats to go with it sometimes anyway um, also this collection paired really well with white I tend to try to pay attention to that when I'm picking pattern papers to use for tutorials or just in general, I kind of tend to lean towards ones that I know will work really well with white or black because that's the cardstock I keep on hand. If you've watched my videos, you've heard over and over and over again, so you're so tired of it, that I don't like to keep pattern paper on hand. I, or sorry, I always say that wrong too. I don't like to keep colored cardstock on hand. It takes up a lot of room. It can get kind of costly, etc. So with that in mind, I do tend to only have a like a nice chunk of white and black. And so when I'm picking pattern paper packs, I keep that in mind. And if you struggle with that card stock matching element, I would recommend that. If you like pairing all your supplies and like finding a card set, I mean, all, by all means, go for it. It's just to me an, uh, an added part of the process. So I'm... 
sort of on the scrap side of things now. I don't have a lot of like big sheets of pattern paper left. What I did really like about this collection, it was, as I mentioned, challenging because it was had a much more scrapbooking lean towards it and a baby lean towards it. It did also have a lot of really good small simple patterns so they like this blue tone on tone here I could use it and I could stamp a sentiment on it and the sentiment would be really readable or I could add stickers to it and I could basically use it almost like a piece of solid cardstock so I am keeping that banner piece in my misty because I'm making a bunch of cards at one time and the first time I, I took it out to stamp on a block here like I'm doing now and then I realized I absolutely do not need to do that <laughs> so the misty can certainly save some time but if you don't have something like that I mean these pattern paper tutorials are kind of geared towards people who don't have a lot of supplies don't want a lot of supplies or or want to use up their supplies so I try not to like pull in a bunch of crazy supplies I will often though use my misty and that's just because it's more convenient and it's a little bit faster, but you by no means need it. I stamp sentiments without it all the time. I would really recommend a high quality ink pad if you're not going to use a tool like the Misty. If you're just going to be using your stamping block, make sure that you have a, a good ink pad, but also that it has one that has you get one that you can refill because. I find that once the ink pad is dried out a little bit, like you've used it you, or you've had it for a few years, it is a little bit harder to get a great impression. And so re-inking it often helps. So there's plenty, I think there's even some that you could get like in a big chain craft store that either come with a refill or you could purchase the refill later online. So I don't know, just a little tip there. If you find that you're having trouble stamping, yes, Double stamping helps a lot, but a really juicy ink pad is pretty good too. Um, now, I just kind of showed you what is left. Because I did this in like two big chunks, literally years apart, um, I wasn't as intentional about all of the choices and thinking like, oh, if I cut this strip, I'm going to be left with something funky I have to work with later. And so this time I feel like I have more random bits left than I might have if I had created all together and a little bit more intentionally, a little less haphazardly as I am here. Um, but I'm still trying to make all these strips work as much as possible. Occasionally when I add, when I take two scrap strips and I put them together, I have a little bit like left over from that. So that bubble paper is adhered or like has a little bit of this red paper in between. And so you see that again with the one with that other blue paper. And that's because it was cut off the bottom of one of those cards where I pieced it together. However, I can now use that piece together strip as a longer strip here as well. So I'm kind of taking advantage of the fact that I've already worked on that. I'm again just trying to create little like scenes with the stickers that I have left. I want to try to use as many stickers as possible. As I mentioned, uh, I believe at the beginning of this video, sometimes I go through my collection or my, I don't know, my stash and I am able to donate things to a local arts and crafts organization. But I try not to be the person who is like donating the single sticker left uh, or, you know, like the three bubbles that are left on a sticker sheet. Like, I don't think anybody has a purpose for those. So what I recommend if you're having a hard time using those last couple of stickers, and I think I'll show this at the end of the video, that you put them on the inside of the cards. So, you know, sometimes we... Well, I don't know. I think there's actually a lot of crafters who decorate the inside of the cards and it's probably more common than I think. But I often forget to add a little detail to the inside of my cards. And what's nice about the sticker sheets is it makes it so easy to just add a little something to the inside as well. Also, I tend, to, when I donate my cards, I tend to add jokes to the inside of cards. And 
because I donate a lot of cards and because it can, just to be honest, it can irritate my shoulder to do that much writing. I have a like a little shoulder injury. I like to print my jokes so that I don't have to write them all out. And therefore, on my blog, on my card resources page, I have printable jokes that you can use. And there are ocean-themed jokes that you can print to go with this paper pad or a similar paper pad or a, you know a stamp set or whatever you have but there are so many themes and I'm always adding more I recently added some jokes in Spanish because some of the organizations ask for cards in other languages and that was one that I could get help from a couple of crafty friends to proofread uh, I don't speak Spanish but uh, or I only, and I only speak English so you know I want to make sure that the jokes are appropriate that I didn't mess up the language or anything like that so um, but I hopefully can have more of those available in the future as well and um, plenty of jokes in, in English as well here I wanted to switch it up because I am creating a card just with stickers so I'm taking a card base and it's high quality cardstock which is important when you're leaving so much of it visible um, and a lot of organizations will mention that like using um, high quality cardstock really adds a little something special to a card. I wanted to because it's just stickers on cardstock I wanted to add just a little touch of something else and so I decided to stamp in color instead of black ink. I often will choose to stamp in black ink just to make things a little bit easier in terms of matching but it can be really fun to use up your colored inks as well not use up but use your colored inks as well so here I'm just sort of like creating little scenes I had three different blue animals so I paired them together kind of all um on that first one like snuggled close together which probably doesn't make sense they probably wouldn't be hanging out that close but that's okay here again I had a couple of blue elements so I decided to keep it like very tone on tone and I'm trying to create like a little visual triangle around the whale was my thought process but I will say I was kind of feeling like it wasn't really making sense. And then so I tried to include the whale in the visual triangle. And then I was like, hmm, well, does this yellow stand out too much? So yeah, I was I was struggling. Using stickers can be a little bit hard. But my just so you know, my, I thought there was that I, I pulled in that extra color and I made a little triangle around the sentiment. So that's it for my card video today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to know more about the cards, please follow the link to my blog in the video description. I will be leaving you links to the products that I used in the video description as well. Uh, leave me a comment with which card is your favorite or feel free to let me know what kinds of paper pads you might want to see in the future as I do try to, or what kinds of like cards you want me to make with paper pads and I will try to keep that in mind. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.